Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be having a look at this cup hauler project with a cross halving joint on the bottom, some planing on the sides and some walking the pillar drill to put these delves through. So stick around and I'll show you how to mark this out and I'll show you how to make it. Okay, so I've put the large uh, two by two piece to one side, that's the vertical piece. And we're gonna have a look at our cross halving joint, which is our bottom two pieces here. Okay, so let's measure along here on one of them and find the center point. All right, they're 180 mil millimeters long. So same as before, let's get our face side and face edge mark. Let's measure 90 millimeters in along the edge here. So try squaring against my face side and face edge mark. And let's push it along. Now you'll notice this project builds on a lot of the skills that was used in the last project and just builds on them a little bit more. So 90 millimeters is halfway. And I'm just going to put a broken line like this. Not a, a full line all the way across. Why? Because that's the center line for me. I'm going to do the same on this piece here. So face side and face edge mark. And same again, measuring 90 millimeters. Using our troy square and our ruler together like that, making sure our troy square is straight in. And I'm just gonna draw a broken line so I know it's the center line. Okay, so let's check the width of our pieces. Okay, so that's 44 millimeters in width. 44 millimeters in width. They were cut from the same plank, so that's or the same length, so that's exactly what they should be. That means we're going to have to go 22 millimeters to the right and 22 millimeters to the left. So let's do that. Okay. I'm going to start and go to the right here. So that means I'm going to push over from the center line 22 millimeters. There's the 22 millimeter mark. Let's draw that in. I'm just going to check that again. 22, bang on. Okay. Now I'm gonna measure 22 millimeters to the right. Flip it over so that the face side and face edge mark is away from you. Troy square towards you, because obviously you wanna keep your troy square against your face side and face edge mark. And 22 millimeters. Like so. Okay. So I've got the first piece done. Let's do the other here now. And now that we have our face side and face edge marked on, oh, sorry, our face side marked on both pieces across, let's flip it up. Let's spin it around and square those lines around the edge. Just like last time, okay? I did it on the candle holder. I'm gonna get my troy square, tuck it straight in like so, and I'm going to square that line across. And you're not gonna be able to see that as easily there, but I'm not gonna move the camera this time um, because you'll see the second one. There it is there. I'm just gonna square these two lines around. So there's one and there's the other. And same again then to do this, just to do the top two as well, square them around the edge like so. Okay, so there they are going around the edge like that. And then the same on the other piece as well. So take those two lines and bring them around the edge. Okay, so we have our halving on both pieces marked out so far. As in, you know, we have our, our width marked out and we have it down the sides. Now what we need to do is we need to mark our depth of our halving joint. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move you in closer and I'll show you me walking for the second time in these series of videos. I'm going to show you me walking with this marking gauge here. Okay, so what I need to do, because I'm going to remove half of this material and half of the other piece as well, I need to measure the thickness of this. 
So let's check it now. And it is 19. Double check the other piece. It is 19 millimeters in thickness. So that means that I'm gonna have a hard time, unless I'm careful, getting a, a perfectly kind of accurate halving joint here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure and set my marking gauge to 10. So loosen off the thumb screw. I'm gonna set it to 10. You can see I'm going back and checking that there again. That's 10 millimeters, okay? And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna come in from the top. So I'm gonna keep my stock against the face side where my squiggle is on both pieces. That's important and I'll show you why going forward. So let's put the piece into the vise. And let's run our marking gauge along here. How do we hold the marking gauge? Well, thumb underneath, index finger above it. Okay. Two fingers on the stem, one finger behind it, and let's push it in. So it's in against my piece, and I'm pushing it away from me. Now, I better put my stop in down there to make sure this doesn't run away from me. And it still managed to run a tiny bit on, but I'm not going to worry too much about that. I'm going to move you again, uh, try and get you at a different angle here to make sure you can see. Okay, so now that I have my force marking gauge line drawn in, and I'm just going to go through that with a pencil there. I'm going to flip this piece end for end, so just loosen the voice, keep the piece in the voice, slide it back like this. And then pinhole in the end, run the marking gauge away from me. So... Pinhole down there, and let's push the marking gauge away from us. Okay, and what I did was I made sure that my stock was in against the side of my piece. Let's go ahead and let's mark that like so. I'm gonna repeat the exact same process on the second piece of timber, probably do that off camera, and um, coming in from the same side so the side that has the face edge mark okay so i have you back with me here now and um, we've got our marking gauge lines in both pieces now we've got to figure out what we're removing and what we're keeping now because it's 19 millimeters here's the important part as in the thickness of the timber is 19. on this piece here okay i'm going to remove the top i'm going to take all of this waste out go around the side do the same thing, just waste mark and on the other side, little X's, I'm gonna remove that. However, on this piece, where the squiggle is on the top, we're gonna to ignore that, we're actually gonna take out the bottom of it. And that leads us to a problem, we don't have the bottom marked. So, very simply, very quickly, take a troy square, your lines are already down the sides, just bring them across, because there's my face, edge mark and I can just put my troy square in against that edge which is what I've done there and then the bottom on this piece it's gone so I've got the top on this piece and the bottom on this piece are being removed I'm going to go grab my bench hook and my tenon saw now I'm going to show you how to chop them out so we have our bench hook put into our voice here I'm going to take my piece put my piece up against the bench hook Slide it over so that the line we're going to cut, which is this line here, is on the edge of the notch here. Hold it in place, make sure your fingers are protected. Okay, I want to cut on the waist side of the line here, so I want to be careful. If I cut too wide here, this halving joint's going to be ruined. Okay, so I'm going to get that just a small bit more accurate. There we go. Okay, now... Same as before, index finger on the side of the saw. Keep it straight up, dead straight. Okay, let's pull back three times. One, two, three. And then we're cutting down only to our marking gauge line. And we're 
down right to my marking gauge line down there. Okay, let's slide that piece over. Okay, and I'm starting to realize now it's probably not enough space for you to hold your hand there. Spin around in the, in the bench hook and let's walk so that we've longer material here to keep our hand against. Line that up with the notch again. And go again. Okay, so there's our two shoulders of a half and joint cut. Just while I have this piece, I'm going to put two rough cuts or maybe even one just in the middle, break up the, this big piece of, of waste here. You'll start to realize this is very similar to a housing joint. Okay, piece number one is done, ready to go. I'm gonna leave that to one side, take piece number two, repeat the same process now, uh, cutting out what we marked out here on this piece. Okay. So I have both pieces cut out ready to go. Going to put them in the voice, get my chisel, chisel and mallet and start removing this waste. So here I've got a 19 millimeter bevel edge chisel and I've got my mallet there. I'm gonna take my piece and put it in the voice. Similar to the way I did the first project in the series um, or on this channel rather, I, I'm gonna keep this in line with the marking gauge. So the marking gauge line is in line with the voice. And I'm just going to check the back of it there, just to get it lined up. There we go. Okay, and now I'm going to remove this waste. And hopefully you've got a good enough angle there to see. Two hands behind the chisel, well one hand on the chisel in this case. Here's my one hand on the chisel. And I'm going to rest it on the voice, and I'm going to use the mallet at the back of it like so, to give it a tap. Yes, what you didn't see just there was me putting on my own goggles just to protect my eyes. The exact same way we did the housing joint, I'm going to chisel in halfway and chisel upwards. Take away all this waste on this side, leave the rest of it, spin it around and work from the back then. Otherwise I'll burst out the back of this piece. Okay, plenty gone on this side. I'm gonna flip it around, move from the other side. Okay, so most of the waste is gone here now. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start pairing this flat now. So I'll probably move you to a different angle so you can see what's going on. So, one hand on the chisel, one hand over the chisel like so. And let's go in here and let's just pair it like this. Okay, very happy with that now. I'm gonna flip it around and walk from the other side. Okay, so the first part of the halving joint is nearly done there. Just gonna finish pairing this, probably time lapse it, and uh, then I'll be back to you.
Okay, so something that students or woodworkers even often struggle with is these little things here. I was once told they were called mustache hairs. So that's a bit of material that's gone up. And if I go in at that too hard here, it doesn't seem to want to go anywhere. Take your chisel, two hands behind the chisel. So one hand on the blade there, just or sorry, on the, the back of the blade rather. Uh, and let's go down the shoulder. Just press into it with your weight. And there she goes. Okay, so there's our first piece ready to go. All right, paired square and flat. Let's do the exact same with the second piece. Okay, so we have our two trenches cut out for a half and we have them paired. Takes patience, takes time, you know, little by little. Let's put them together. Bit of force required sometimes to get these together if you've cut them out properly. Um, I'm not against using a clamp or a vise, but you want to protect the timber. So if you can avoid using that, or maybe you have to put some cardboard or another piece of plywood or something like that to keep them from damaging the timber. And there it is there. There's a little cross halving joint like so. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to look at this top piece here. Obviously that's going to sit on top there. We need some drill holes to hold our cups or chains or glasses or whatever it may be. Uh, and we can uh, chamfer the edges here or we're going to take this kind of down to nearly an octagonal type shape. But I'm not going to go for full octagon because there's just no need for it. Just to take some of the sharpness off these edges. Uh, so I'll show you how to use a jack plane there and do that. So I'm going to bring you in a little bit closer now, just to see, so you can see me mark this out. Okay, so we have our larger piece here, 44 by 44, okay? What we're going to do is we're going to put our face side and face edge mark on it first. Then I'm going to measure around 110, 110 millimeters from this edge down here. Now, your piece might be a little bit different at this stage because it depends on what you want to store on it. I'm going to store some small little coffee cups on it. So I've chosen my measurements to fit that and I have sketches to go along with it. But, you know, it might be different depending on what sort of adjustments, let's say, especially for my students, what sort of adjustments they've made at this stage, okay? It all depends on what you want this to be. Do you want it to be a coffee cup holder for, for necklaces, for chains, you know, that sort of thing. Um, I'm gonna move over another 110. Uh, I'm gonna have to turn this piece away from me Turn my tri square towards me to keep my tri square balanced. Okay. And um, what I can also do is if that's 140, I'm gonna move in 30 from the side here. So I'll move in 30 from this edge. I've just done a quick bit of mats there to make life easier for myself to make sure I'm more accurate. Okay. I wanted them to be 110, 110 more. So I just measured 110 and then came in from the other end 30. Because that piece would have been 140. Let's Leave that where it is there for a second. Let's take our marking gauge, okay? And we're just going to mark where the drill hole needs to go. Um, you could also do it with a pencil, but I prefer sometimes to do it with a marking gauge. It's 44 is the thickness, the width. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna set my marking gauge to 22, which is the halfway mark. So my marking gauge to 22. Tighten it up. And come in from the side there and just put a pinhole in it. Let's go down here, in from the side, pinhole in it there. So I have my two marks for my drill bit to go through. Now I'm going to jump over to the pillar drill and just drill through those two holes real fast. So we're over here back at the pillar drill again for another uh, project. 
I don't need to go through any health and safety on it, I just only show you how to use it. Because at this stage, you know, we've, if you've watched a previous video, you know what the situation is on this. Um, it's clamped up, ready to go, it's lined up, and I've got a 9mm drill bit in here to fit the dowel. So I'm going to turn it on, I'm going to drill straight through, I've got a waste piece below to stop me from hitting the table. Okay, and now we've got reclamped, ready to go for the second uh, drill hole. Okay, so we're back over the workbench. We've got a piece drilled out. Now what we need is some guidelines, some lines to help us put the chamfered edge on it or take the edge off. What I've done is I've got my marking gauge and I've set it to five millimeters, all right, between the stock and the pin. I'm gonna get my stock in up against my face side and face edge. And I'm going to scribe that the full length of my piece. Okay? Like so. So now I've got a mark line the whole length of my piece. I'm going to do that on every edge. So I'm going to flip this up. I need to turn it around now for a second. Come in from this edge and give myself another line on this edge. Okay, there we go. So that's that there. Now you can see what I've got here is I've got two lines. That, that gives me a perfectly 45 degree angle on the, on the corners here. I need to do that on all four edges so that the corners are all marked and ready to go. So I'm gonna do that off camera just to speed things up. That's what we're looking for there. Come in from the side and get yourself a marking gauge line like so. Okay, so there we are. We've got all four sides marked out. I think it's time to look at the jack plane. Okay, so I've put my piece in the voice at an angle. I have my jack plane here ready to go. Uh, we have the chamfers all marked out. I'm not gonna do this as a full tutorial on how to use the jack plane. I'll put that in a separate video, how to set it up and all that. What I will say is I have the blade only a tiny bit out, don't need much of it. I'm gonna stand up now, because I don't work sitting down. One hand like this, one hand like this, and let's run the full length. Try and keep the plane flat so that I'm not kind of creating a sloped chamfer. These are really nice shavings, I have to say, coming off this plane. Very fond of it. There we are there, I've got one of the kind of sides chamfered. Just a, a word on that plane there, it's a Clifton five and a half. Um, I've had it many years now and it's it's been an absolutely excellent um, plane to work and use. What I will say is um, in, in you know the workshop in the school here, um, we have some faithful and Stanley planes. So I might do a, a bit of a video on them as I said another day. I think I'm gonna time lapse the rest of this. You don't need to see me doing it. So, um, you know, doing it in, in slow detail. So I'll time lapse this and we'll come back to you when we're ready to, to assemble the two pieces. Okay, so now we have our upright, planed, ready to go. We're just gonna put our drill hole in the bottom of our halving joint here so that we can drill up and join the two pieces together. So I'm gonna go from one corner to the other, just like I've done there, and then I'm gonna cross over that to find the center point. So just go the opposite way. So once you create an X like that, that center point there is where you're gonna to wanna to drill. I'm gonna take a four millimeter drill bit now and I'm gonna drill that um, all the way through. Okay, so I have my piece clamped with a bit of scrap wood, clamped to the bench securely. I've got my four millimeter drill bit in my drill here. I'm just gonna press that into the center point and I wanna drill all the way through here. So I'm just gonna drill through this.
and that's perfect. Now I'm going to change a bit of the drill and screw this into my upright. So the last thing I'm going to do before I screw it in is I've got this countersink bit in here. I'm just going to put the countersink bit into the hole that already exists. And just countersink that a small bit there. What that means then is when this is screwed in, the screw won't be below the surface and causing the piece to wobble. Okay, and it's good practice if you're putting something, let's say this is going to be on the flat like that. It's good practice to use a countersink bit. Um, I almost didn't use one in this project, but it is definitely good practice. Okay, so I've got my upright piece upside down in the vise. I'm going to take my halving joint with the um, countersunk bit on the bottom. I'm going to line this up. Now, no doubt there's more accurate ways of measuring this with a jig and stuff like that, but I'm happy doing it by eye for this, this demonstration in this video and this project. Now that I have it in place, I'm just going to take a 4 by 30 and... Well, so there's our two parts of our project assembled together. Um, I'm just going to take some dowel rod now, 9mm in diameter, and it's 180mm long. And I'm just going to slot this through. Just iron that up now just to get it kind of even and balanced. Uh, and there we go. That's the project 100% complete. Obviously, you know, individual students and individual woodwork and stuff like that can shape their bottom of their piece if they want, put some chamfer in, some cords on it and that sort of thing. But it, as it stands, it does everything I need it to do. It's a step on from the house enjoying project. It's a step in the right direction towards the toured project. You know, um, adding in the planing especially is, this, is gonna be important for this tour project in this series or in this channel or, or really, um, which will be some sort of a boat project. But I have to say, very happy with how that turned out. Nice little quick project, not a lot of material in it and has all the, the you know the, the skills that we need at this stage of the, the woodworking journey so thanks for watching thanks for sticking around um hopefully you've subscribed if you haven't i'd really appreciate it if you do it helps me and um, you know build up this kind of following build up a channel and, and kind of create a bit of a you know a presence essentially uh, so thanks very much and um we'll see you next time